biggest challenge when it comes to descriptive writing is being able, especially when you look at the question before you, to think of even how to start and different types of phrases, different ways to describe the setting, the image, the question on the spot. So the best way to tackle a descriptive writing question and especially to prepare in advance of a exam or of course an assessment relating to descriptive writing is literally just have a bank of quotations in your mind relating to different settings okay and of course make sure that this these quotations especially the ones that can help you start off and then you know as you kind of get more into the descriptive writing you find that you're able to kind of branch out and you kind of naturally find that other phrases come to you much more quickly the trick with this is to memorize some of these phrases and of course try to make sure that you do so according to different settings okay so when you're thinking about different phrases for descriptive writing memorize them according to settings and of course also split the phrases that you memorize between daytime positive settings versus nighttime negative settings so as you can see behind me I have decided to put forward obviously forest as one of the very popular settings and as you can see on the uh, right hand there's the positive setting and of course on my left are the negative settings you know um, and phrases that you can use and I've split them into five phrases which I would suggest memorizing and kind of using them okay and remember so some of these words you can use them interchangeably even with other different settings so let's look at the five phrases which I'd like to suggest to remember when it comes to a forest setting when you're writing a descriptive writing but you're doing so from a positive perspective and a positive framework so the first phrase would be and I always love starting off any story with pathetic fallacy. You can begin with the sun's rising rays gilded the forest and you can even describe the forest as magnificent, resplendent and so on, dot, dot, dot. Then you develop and latch on an extra sentence based on that opening, okay? And of course, as you can see here, you've got pathetic fallacy. You also have lots of alliteration and this idea of the sun's rising rays, which are gilding the forest. It's a really beautiful imagery of the forest being kind of covered in this golden sheen. The second phrase would be birds cooed and cawed whilst trees swayed. So now this is you describing, especially as you're getting into the atmosphere and mood, describing kind of what you can hear, what you can even smell, right? So you can maybe latch onto the end of the sentence, what you can also smell, the earthy scents that you can smell within the forest. Third phrase, leaves rustled and crunched beneath the weight of, could it be beneath your weight as you're stepping forward, or could it be beneath the weight of a squirrel as it's scuttling across the forest floor? Fourth phrase, secretive creatures scurried and scuttled through and of course here there's really nice sibilant sounds but in this case it's not ominous it's kind of like positive you know there's this kind of nice setting almost like a really peaceful setting within this forest and the fifth and final phrase to remember when it comes to the, uh, a forest setting and this can either be in your setting over the paragraph your atmosphere and mood your central focus feelings or your slight change paragraph could be where you're talking about what you can see across the forest right lilies roses daisies blue bowls buttercups which are different uh, varieties of flowers carpeted the floor this is a metaphor it's kind of forming this carpet right again these are like really colorful phrases you're using lots of listing in describing this really beautiful resplendent forest let's now look at some negative phrases that you can memorize and commit to memory with descriptive writing and of course if you start off with kind of this negative dark image you obviously start off with negative pathetic fallacy skeletal trees slouch beneath the black velvet sky as blah 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 okay of course, what this is illustrating, especially using pathetic fallacies, is that it's completely nighttime and it's quite a dark forest. The second phrase could be an ominous silence fell over the forest trees, flowers, creatures as something else was happening while something else was happening. Although, however, something else is happening. Again, here you can see there's lots of uh, listing you could use, but equally you're creating a sense of atmosphere and mood, a really ominous atmosphere. Third paragraph, uh, third sentence, third phrase to remember could be the crepuscular sky. Crepuscular means twilight, the period just before darkness. So the crepuscular sky casts long leafy shadows across the forest floor, dot, 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 latch on the rest of the sentence onto that. Fourth phrase could be slinking. So this is walking in a really sneaky, suspicious way. So slinking through the clustered trees, the invisible predator searched whatever and the fifth and final phrase could be my feet squelched as it trampled decaying leaves and wet mud so here we can see a really kind of negative framework 
from seeing the forest okay so as opposed to this where we've got really nice beautiful imagery relating to the forest this is really dark negative imagery that you could use and obviously commit to memory if you're describing the forest from a scary perspective so that's really it when it comes to interesting and powerful phrases you can memorize and these especially will help you when you're starting off your descriptive writing with a forest setting